Hey, my name is Dan Benson from Zen Healthcare IT, and I am back with another Mirth Connect tutorial video. Today, we're going to be talking about attachments in Mirth Connect. Before we dive in, this video is based on a guide from the Mirth Connect forums that we highly recommend you check out. We'll put a link to the article down in the description below. Also, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel as we have lots more Mirth Connect tutorial content on the way, and it really helps us. Okay, let's get started. Attachments are a great way to optimize how Mirth Connect handles large messages, and they allow you to reduce the overall amount of data that needs to be stored in the database. Here's a couple of key facts to note about attachments in Mirth Connect. One, attachments are extracted from the message before the preprocessor. And two, the attachment data is replaced with an attachment ID. Attaching the entire message. One of the simplest ways you can use attachments in Mirth Connect is simply attaching the entire message. For example, let's say you have an HTTP listener that you know will be taking PDF files. If you were to set up your listener like this with none selected in the attachment dropdown menu, then you would see the raw PDF data being stored in your messages. The problem is that each one of those message blobs represents an entry in the database. But if you were to configure a channel to store the entire message as an attachment by selecting the entire message in the attachment dropdown menu, then you would see the PDF bytes would no longer be stored in the message and would be instead be extracted before the preprocessor. Attachments using regular expressions, or regex for short. Sometimes you need to work with large blobs of data that are included as part of a message but may not be the entire message. For example, what if an image is embedded in an HL7 message? This is a good scenario for using regex attachment option. The regex attachment handler lets you use regular expressions to extract attachment data. Click the regex handlers properties button to open the set attachment properties dialog. In this example, an image is embedded in OBX 5.5 and will be converting that portion to an attachment and writing the image to the file system. In the source connector, select regex in the attachment dropdown and enter our regular expression. As you can see, our regex snippet code is entered. Once done, you can click close. Now we will add a destination file writer. Open the destination tab and add a transformer mapper step to map OBX 5.5 to attachment ID. This will allow us to get the image by attachment ID and write it. Be sure to check the file type binary. Lastly, set the file writer destination template to attachment ID. This will be replaced with the actual attachment ID, which will then be replaced by the actual attachment itself. Now save and deploy the channel and send a test message. You can test with the test underscore message dot txt file that we put in the description down below. This contains a base 64 encoded PNG test image. If all goes well, you should see an image in your directory you specified. Attachments using JavaScript. You can also manipulate attachments with JavaScript. Using the same attachment dropdown, select JavaScript and then click properties. Add the following to extract the message into an attachment. Add the word world to it and change the message to the attachment ID. Now, if you send a test message with the word hello, whatever receives it will get hello world. Remember, before the destination sends the message out, it will replace the attachment ID with the attachment. Attachments using DICOM. Some of the larger messages coming through Mirth Connect are of the DICOM type. A lot of performance testing and tweaking has gone into making DICOM processing as efficient as possible, but it's important that you still configure your channels properly to take advantage of these improvements. It's best to store DICOM messages as attachments, and to ensure that Mirth Connect does this, you'll want to set your source data type to DICOM, which automatically selects DICOM attachment type as well. If you instead use the raw data type, then your large DICOM messages would be copied several times throughout the message processing pipeline, taking up a lot more room and using a lot more memory. Attachments using custom attachment handler. 
For those more advanced Java users out there, it's also possible to write your own Java class to parse and manipulate attachments. With a custom attachment handler, the sky is the limit. For instance, this image shows an example custom attachment handler created and imported as a library. This uses a regular expression to parse the image and also flip the image vertically before attaching. And the outcome looks like this. Removing attachments. Note for all attachment types, if your channel and subsequent destination do not care about the attachment data at all, you can further reduce the disk usage by unchecking the store attachments checkbox on the channel configuration screen, which will extract the attachment from your message as usual, but not store the attachment. It's important to note that this means the attachment data cannot be retrieved. Cross-channel attachments. What if you have a Mirth Connect channel with an attachment that sends to another channel as part of your message processing pipeline? In this case, the attachment will be extracted and then saved, then reattached before sending to the second channel, which will then extract and save the attachment before reattaching and sending the message out. This is a suboptimal situation since the attachment is being extracted and saved twice, but it can be improved. When setting the reattach attachments radio button to no, the attachment will not be reattached before sending to the destination. Instead, any attachments found in the message will be expanded to include the channel ID and the message ID in addition to the normal attachment ID, which allows the downstream channel to properly handle the attachments it receives. The downstream channel will now receive the attachment already extracted from the upstream channel, meaning the upstream channel is no longer reattaching and the downstream channel is no longer re-extracting, thus saving time and disk space. As you can see, there are many ways in which you can work with attachments in Mirth Connect, and they are incredibly valuable for ensuring that you are utilizing database storage efficiently. That wraps up today's video on attachments in Mirth Connect. As always, if you need help with your healthcare integration projects, be sure to check us out on the web at consultzen.com, where we have great resources and some custom Mirth Connect tools that make managing your Mirth Connect channels and instances much easier, so be sure to check it out. My name is Dan Benson with Zen Healthcare IT. Thank you so much, take care, and we'll see you next video.